Yo yo people, welcome back to Rams Tech Hub. And in this one, as you can see, I'll be looking at some microcontrollers. So typically on this channel, I speak about the Raspberry Pi quite a lot. If that's a micro computer, I would say. Very tiny computer that you can fit in the palm of your hand. Um, but now I'm going to be looking at microcontrollers. So going from the left, I have the Arduino Uno. So this was one of those earlier devices where people were actually able to buy these very cheaply this was about i don't know 10 15 pounds maybe came with a usb cable and you were able to actually program this using c the c programming language actually send it some instructions to control LED, to control devices hence the name microcontroller right one of the very first early mass-produced devices that became widely known by households right next we have the um, arduino mega Similar device, same company, um, but this one was a much more powerful device. Yeah, um, the clock cycles on this were much quicker than the Uno. And this was, again, typically the same, use, using similar, very similar industries or using very similar types of projects, but much, much faster than that one. I'm not going to go over the specs of these in, that, in this video because this is, this is why we're here. This is the Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, the Raspberry Pi... The company Raspberry Pi or the Raspberry Pis in general, they're typically microcomputers, so very tiny computers that can fit in um, the palm of your hands. And typically speaking, they're about uh, the size of a bank card or credit card, right? That's typically the size that they have. Now, this device, as you can see, is very, very different. Let me, well, I don't have a credit card here with me, um, but this device is much, much smaller. This is called the Raspberry Pi Pico again. Um, Pico, I'm not sure why they call it Pico, just maybe because it's tiny, it's teeny tiny, so I don't know, right? The Raspberry Pi Pico is a microcontroller and not a microcomputer like the Raspberry, like the typical, the traditional Raspberry Pi. So this device here can do more or less the same types of things that this device can do. And if we look at the size quickly, I'm going to go, go over the specs quickly when I get back onto my laptop. But let me just pull this off, this foam thing. That's a massive difference in size. And this device, the Raspberry Pi Pico, in the UK right now, costs about, I would say, four or five pounds if you get it on a decent deal. And funnily enough, they have a new device which came out um, a few weeks ago, which is a Raspberry Pi Pico WH. The Pico W means Pico with Wi-Fi. The H is not really relevant. It's the, it's the least important part. H just means headers. And as well, hopefully you guys can see this. These are, uh, I think, 0 0.1 inch spacers, which you can then plug into a breadboard. And then from there, you can connect other things relatively easily. The significance of this, the Raspberry Pi Pico, is that it costs five pounds, four dollars, five dollars, five pounds, roughly there. Whereas the Arduino Uno, which is much slower, has more or less the same capabilities, costs maybe two or three times as much. I checked out the Arduino Mega not too long ago. And this was about 15 to 20 pounds. So I'm guessing the Uno is about 10 to 15 pounds, right? This tiny device has Wi-Fi built into it. Not this specific one, but the one um, I'll be getting a Pico W soon. They have Wi-Fi built onto them. The significance of this, as you can see here on these devices, we have no Ethernet ports. Um, Typically, to get Wi-Fi on these, you have to get a break, what's known as a breakout board. And a breakout board allows you to have Ethernet, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, so on and so forth. The Raspberry Pi Pico W, as default, comes with Wi-Fi. It does have Bluetooth 5.2, I believe, but it doesn't come enabled now. So a later future firmware update is going to actually activate that. And again, this is, I don't know, let's, let, let's say the size of my thumb. This is the size of my thumb. Cost about five pounds has Wi-Fi, has Bluetooth, and again, another massively important thing about this, many people look at C as an old, archaic language, even though it's one of the best languages, still very, very fast, very good for embedded system designs, but this uses C, C++, and uses Python as well. The native thing that this was designed for, well, not the native one, but the one that's going to be more I would say easy to understand for most people is going to be Python and specifically micro Python. So not the full Python. And again, as I've said many times, engineers don't really know how to name things or label things. We just describe things. So micro Python is just a tinier version of Python made for embedded systems. 
So that's what is going to be running on here. Um, let's see if I can bring this up. We have micro USB ports and on the micro USB ports, we plug these into our PCs. We drag and drop the firmware to tell it that I am now a programmable device. And from there, we use the Thunny IDE, which I'm going to be showing this entire step very soon, maybe in the next video. And that's it. You simply program in Python, you press run, you press play, you drag and drop the file if you want to do it that way. And you can actually program this tiny device again in Python. One of the, I think, the best entry level, high level programming languages. Entry level meaning if you're learning to program, Python is a very, very good method to learn. Reason being, it's so close to pseudocode and so close to human readable English, let's say, that it makes sense straight away to many people. The words that, um, the, the keywords used or, 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 or the functions and features used in Python. And funny is free. Everything is free. There's so many resources for it. Now, C is still very, very much alive. And I don't think C will ever die. But the simple fact that so many devices support C. So both these Arduinos, the Uno on my left here and the Mega on my right, both of them support C. But I just think using Python is also a much better entry level. For example, students who have never programmed before, people who want to get into embedded systems and see how things work, Python might be a nicer, easier entry level. And... I would say all the components compatible with the Uno and the Mega, so Arduino devices, should be compatible with this once you can find the drivers online. And I will, let me just grab something quickly. Here in this bag, I have an I2C adapter, which I'm gonna actually connect to a 16 by two LCD. And again, use the Raspberry Pi Pico to control that LCD. I have a motion sensor somewhere. I have a buzzer, I have a smoke sensor, I have a microphone. I have, um, I think I have a tiny speaker somewhere as well. I have quite a few devices which I'm going to actually connect to the Raspberry Pi Pico and actually show you how to use it. So for anyone who is here for Unit 19, I think Unit 19 in IT BTEC Level 3, which is IoT Internet of Things, the Raspberry Pi Pico, which came out in, I, th I believe, June, July 2022, is going to be the device you want to go with. Again, that was, let's just say, for argument's sake, with, with, the, with the pins added to it, that's an extra one pound, I believe. Um, the Wi-Fi model is maybe six pounds, so maybe seven to 10 pounds. Let's just say 10 pounds for argument's sake. This device costs 10 pounds, right? Um, for IoT, the unit, all you need to do is to trigger some activity which sends you some notification. Because this, not this specific one, but because the Pi P code W is gonna have Wi-Fi built in or Bluetooth built in, but let's stick to Wi-Fi for now. Because it's going to have Wi-Fi built in, what you can do is, let's say we attach a motion sensor to it. This has a built-in LED. Um, we can attach some speaker phone, uh, not some speaker phone, some um, speaker or buzzer to it. So when it detects motion at a specific time when there should be no motion, the LED comes on, the speaker makes some noise, and we have the actual device send us an email or a notification to an app or service of our choice because it has the Wi-Fi on there, this can be used for IoT instead of the traditional Raspberry Pi, which is very, very, very hard to come by at the moment because of all the chip short shortages around the world. So this is going to be a much better device to work with for IoT and just in general. So what I'm going to be doing is, again, showing you how to connect individual things. I'm going to be showing you, showing you how to set this up from scratch and at some point, I'm going to get to cover the Unit 19. If Unit 19 is not IoT, please just forgive me. I'm going to cover the Unit 19 stuff that we need to do as well, just like I've done for Unit 1, 2. I'm doing Unit 4 and Unit 9 or 6 at the moment as well. Um, yeah, not much else there to say. I'm going to put the specs up on screen at some point while I'm doing this video. So hopefully you guys found this interesting and there's going to be a lot more to come. I'm going to be doing a mini, very, very basic Python tutorial, just the stupid basics you need for unit 19 for IoT and maybe for unit 4 for programming. For people doing unit 6 microcontrollers on the BTEC level 3 engineering course, this is going to be useful for yourselves as well. Now again, the Arduino Uno and the Arduino Mega are still very, very, very good and very important devices, but I'm going to move away from these because it is C. Um, I really like Python. This was five pounds. It has Wi-Fi built in, so the, the applications that I can do with the Raspberry Pi Pico is going to far supersede what I can do with the Uno and Omega, with, because again, 15, 20 pounds-ish, 
and I still have to go and buy a breakout board to get network connectivity. Whereas with the Pico, it's built in for £10. I have everything I need for £10. It does an LED on there. I don't know if that button works for anything else other than to put it into programming mode or into um, firmware mode. I don't think it does anything else as far as I'm aware. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you found this useful and there are a lot of videos queued up. So if this is the stuff you're interested in, click like, click subscribe and just stay tuned. All right, I'll see you soon.